Markets are looking to find their footing after a three-day slide following Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell's much-anticipated speech at Jackson Hole. Joining us now to discuss whether a Fed pivot away from rate hikes is officially off the table and what's going on in the bond market. Chris Whelan, Senior Canada Rate Strategist at TD Securities. Great to have you here. Welcome to the program. Yeah, thanks, Greg. Appreciate it. So let's start with the big question of the summer and the uh, theory of the Fed pivot, which seemed uh, Jerome Powell seemed to go at lengths to start to just throw cold water all over and say, listen, this is going to be a tough fight. How are the markets anticipating uh, sort of interpreting it and specifically the bond market? I think the bond market had the meeting uh, right ahead of time. We, we kind of leaked higher in yields ahead into the meeting. The equity market uh, is, is still uh, digesting that, uh, I guess, aggressive hawkish tone that, that came out of there. I think the bond market's telling us that uh, whether or not the, 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 the central banks are, are going to come out with a strong hawkish footing, which I think is clear now uh, post Jackson Hole, the bond market is telling us that this pain isn't going to last that long or something's going to change in the economy because the bond market is, it, we're, we're around 3.1% on the, on the US 10 year. The highs are around like 3.5%. The, we're hanging in there at a, uh, the bond market has a muted reaction post, post Jackson Hole. So I think the bond market is telling you that the pain doesn't have to last for as long as we think, or the economy is going to roll over, or the data the data is going to soften, inflation is going to soften. So, so I think I think um, the even though the uh, the general consumer might might be reading that that into that Jackson Hole as a as a as a scary moment. I think uh, we don't know what we're bracing for, but I think that we're, they're not going to be able to maintain that hawkish stance for long. Is what the bond market is telling us. Does that give us enough uh, information to bring the word pivot back into the discussion? Or is the word pivot sort of becoming like transitory as well? At some point, it just wasn't useful anymore to a discussion about what was happening in the markets. Uh, I think I think the pivot has evolved to when they're done. So so they're not, so the pivot is over now. They're not going to pivot, but it's it, now we're talking about when they're when they're done and what what the what the what we look like on a forward basis. So does the uh, I think the Inflation is looks like it, the bond market is telling us that inflation is going to start softening, and I think we're all sort of hoping for the the best scenario on the soft landing. But uh, the, we, it's difficult to say whether the bond market is pricing a hard landing and sustained inflation, or what what what, what we're pricing in there. But we're definitely uh, we're de we're definitely pricing in uh, uh, the the, pi the sorry the pivot is gone, and and it's kind of about more when we end. And I think the bond market is saying that the hiking cycle is ending sooner. Than later, so so should should be ending, uh, uh, yeah, before the spring next year. Because the fascinating thing, obviously, about when central banks when they take the action on rates, either as they have aggressively to the upside recently or to the downside at the end of the pandemic, we're supposed to have a bit of time uh, before it actually makes its way fully felt. And we've had some super size, jumbo size, or I don't even know what words to use anymore for like jumps of 75 basis points or 100 basis points in this country. Uh, that's going to take some time, isn't it? I mean, at some point, do the central banks take and look and say, let's see how this key that continues to flow through the economy. I think I think we're already starting to see the signs of of, of the impact starting to be felt. I think the the uh, built up inventories. I think the uh, uh, today we had Canadian GDP. The the, the flash estimate shows so shows a zero point one percent contraction and, uh, in the coming month. I think that the data is starting to soften overall, and I think that that's where the bond market's getting its cue and extrapolating forward that that we these hikes are working, and uh, and they are uh, they are bringing inflation expectations down, uh, and they are uh, contributing to slowing in, in overall consumer activity in, in general. Now, of course, Jerome Powell is saying that you know it's going to be a lengthy fight to try to bring inflation back down to where they'd like it to be. And of course, the sweet spot is you know two percent and getting within that range. How tough of a fight is that? I've heard other people say, "Oh, you're probably going to see you know the inflation print cool significantly over the next little while." But that last mile, that that last mile might be the hardest mile. I think that's the problem. Like that, we're going to go into an uncomfortable zone where it takes time to get down from. So we're, we're so we, we expect that we're peak, we, inflation has peaked around 8.6 percent in the U.S., 8.1 percent in Canada, and so we're going to move into the fives in the first quarter of next year, and then and then into the three handle in the, in Q2. If Q1 next year should feel quite uncomfortable if the bond market is correct, because we should we should we still have inflation at an uncomfortable level for central banks well above the 2% target, while we should have clear signs of, of growth deterioration. 
So I think Q1 is that is that uncomfortable moment where uh, uh, that that's the difficult moment, and I think that that the that difference of five percent versus two is why rates stay at uh, around the three and a half. Uh, 3.75 percent level, uh, 3.5 percent in Canada, 3.75 percent level in the U.S. If, if our forecasts uh, hold um, into uh, Q1, the, through Q1 and Q2, and then so we we, we think that the cuts become into play in in uh, Q3, Q4 next year. If there still are investors out there holding on to the pivot narrative, that seems to be the moment that will test the resolve of central bankers. When you are looking at, as you said, a slowing economy, perhaps you start to see the jobless numbers start to rise, the labor market start to weaken. Can they hold their resolve? Can they look into the face of that and say, we realize we've inflicted pain, but we have to continue to let you feel that pain on this mission to bring down inflation? Yes, unfortunately, that I think that pain I think it's it's easier to say pain than feel pain. So we'll see how that we'll see <laughs> yeah, we'll see how that, we'll yeah. see we'll see how that feels in Q1 next year. But I think um, I think to your point uh, to your point the pivot uh, anyone holding on to the notion that the central banks were done hiking that that's that that that's that's gone. And I think in Canada we have I think it's market consensus that we have 75 beeps ahead. It's it's pretty close to market consensus that they're going to go uh, 50 beeps for the next two meetings in the U.S. So I think in both cases you have about uh, 100 beeps of hikes, uh, kind of at least in Canada and the U.S. on the on the on the, in the coming on the coming months. So uh, I think that pivot notion of, of them ending soon is is over because 100 beeps is 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 not is not small. Like you said, it, it, these are big hikes. So the the, the uh, that uh, that pivot notion is is gone, and uh, we're, we're gonna we're, we'll we'll talk about what we do at 100 beeps from now. Longer term, and I know it's so hard to try to predict what's going to happen in the future. But I feel like we've had a decade or more since the financial crisis of central banks sort of always being front and center uh, with monetary policy. Can we ever get to a point where we have a normalized regime of interest rates? So something though, do we even know what normal is anymore when it comes to the cost of borrowing? Right. I, I remember being in university thinking, wow, we, 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 get, we have monetary policy figured out now. We hike a little <laughs> bit, we cut a little bit, and then, uh, then, I, then, uh, then we have 2008, and then that certainly wasn't the case. I think, I think unfortunately, we're, we're, we're very much still stuck in the boom and bust. In the boom and bust cycles, it would be really nice if we got a soft landing this time, but uh, we, we really hit the pedal full on during COVID because uh, we saw that, that 2008 as scares of, of, a, of, a, of a great recession, and then uh, we realized that was a bit too hard, but we didn't know at the time. And now, and now we have to hike uh, to a degree of interest rates that we haven't seen in a long time. When we were when we we were just getting used to zero, we all thought zero was the norm. We were just stuck at zero. So I'm never going to pay for money again. <laughs> <laughs> never going to pay for money. Money's free. But uh, the uh, I I think of, uh, of I it's hard it's hard when we're already when we're talking about hikes. The higher you the, the higher you hike, the shorter the distance would be between the, the time you cut again. So I think for now the bond market has been uh, extremely volatile, uh, f f and that that's been a phenomenon we've been dealing with over the over the last year uh, since 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 uh, COVID emerged. And so the that bond market volatility is kind of telling you that uh, it's, it might be a ways of time before we understand uh, um, uh, calm interest rates. So I think I think we still have to deal with cycles for for for, for uh, a good a good amount of time.